Hey everybody, we're going to do some more ionic compound naming today, but today we're going to talk about cations that can have more than one charged, aka multi-charged cations. So for some context on our flowchart, we've already done that blue column, but we're actually going to stay in the same column. We are just doing this bottom bullet point. We need to check whether our metal needs a Roman numeral or not, and you'll see what that means in a second. It's gonna be really useful for you to have a periodic table out. Also, if you have your whole year resources document out that looks like this, that's gonna be valuable as well. And we are going to be looking in specific at this table over here on the left. And you'll notice that there are, for all of these single metal ions, here are your single metal ions going down this column, you'll notice they each have two names. Well, most of them have two names. Down through this spot, they all have two names. And you'll notice that there is a classical or a Latin name, and you'll also notice that there is a name that has a Roman numeral. Now, just some things that you may have already re realized about this list, um, but it bears us talking about. <clears throat> the Roman numeral in each name matches the charge of the ion. So gold plus one is gold Roman numeral one. Gold three is gold with a plus three charge, right? So there's logic there, that makes sense. The classical names might not look as familiar, but the classical names help to identify why some of the symbols look so weird. Why is gold AU and not like GO, right? So that's based on its classical name. The other thing to be aware of with the classical names is you'll notice that all the classical names either end with OUS or IC. OUS, IC, OUS, IC. And you'll also notice, if you look really closely, that the OUS version of every single one of these ions going down the list is the one with the lower charge, right? So OUS has an O in it, low has an O in the middle of it. OUS starts with O. Conversely, IC starts with I, and high has an I in the middle of it. So again, what do I mean by that? Well, gold has two charges, right? Plus one and plus three the lower of the two, one is less than three, ends with OUS. And that's the case for all of these. Now, they're not all plus one and plus three. Notice chromium is plus two and plus three, which would, whichever one is less is always going to have an OUS ending, and whichever one is more is always going to have an IC ending. So that's one way of kind of navigating your way through this table. Now, you'll have this table on a test, so you don't need to memorize it, but it's helpful to be able to find stuff quickly with these little tricks. So let me join you back on your note guide. <clears throat> We're gonna talk about these cations that might have more than one or multiple charges. Um, and we said that can be written either as a Roman numeral or it can be in this traditional Latin sense. And remember we said that the higher of the charges has IC and the lower of the charge has OUS. Whenever we're doing this, one thing to keep in mind, and this is talked about in letter E down here, one thing to keep in mind is that the anion's charge never changes, right? If you look at your periodic table, our anions are non-metals. They always have a single charge. They can't have more than one. So that can really help us as we work on our naming. And as we practice here, we're actually gonna start with the right-hand side. We're gonna go from name to formula first, and then we'll come back to the left-hand side I think name to formula first makes a bit more sense and can set the stage for the left-hand side. So much like we did in the first video, we are going to identify every one of these ions. So chromic, you can find it over on your little cheat sheet and you'll notice that chromic, it has an IC ending, so that's the higher charge, but what are the two charges? Well, chromium can be plus two or plus three. So chromic is our plus three version. Chloride never changes, right? Chloride is always Cl minus one. And so when we put those together, you can use that crisscross method where this three comes down with chlorine and the one comes down with chromium. Or you can just think about the fact that you are going to need three Cl's for every one chlorine. I'm sorry, for every one chromium, excuse me. All right, let's try again. Stannous fluoride, Stannous. <clears throat> Sounds like a great name, but Stannous is tin. OUS ending for this tin, you can find on your chart, says SN plus two. Fluoride is fluorine. Fluorine, if it becomes an ion, has a minus one charge. How many do you need? Either crisscross or think about it. Either way, you'll get SNF2. Jumping down to mercury two nitride, you'll notice this one's written the other way. So mercury is HG. The Roman numeral two tells you that it has a plus two charge. 
So HG plus two. Nitride, that's nitrogen. Nitrogen has a minus three charge. So now perhaps you want to use that, that crisscross method and that's going to be helpful to you. Or option B, you can think about what is the lowest common multiple of two and three? Well, it's six. So how many mercuries do I need to get me to six? I need three mercuries, right? Because three times it's plus two charge gives me a plus six. And I need two nitrogens because two times it's minus three charge gives you a minus six. So those cancel out and it's neutral, but you'll notice that if you just crisscross the charges, you get there a little bit faster. <clears throat> Ferrous is also on your list. Notice it's Fe plus two. Sulfide is sulfur, but as an ion, it's S minus two. So obviously those charges are going to count, cancel out directly and we will get FeS. And finally, copper one is Cu. Roman numeral one means plus one charge and phosphide is P and it has a minus three charge. So we are going to need three of those coppers. So Cu three and then P. All right, so we've done, dare I say, the easier side. We've gone name to formula. Let's back up and let's go the other way. And we are going to try both different naming systems for every single one of these. So let's talk about what we know in all of these. HGO. What do we know about HGO? Well, there's one thing we know. We know that HG is mercury, right? So I'm going to write out mercury here. And we know that mercury can be written as mercury or it can be written as merc. Your, and then we're going to add either an O-U-S or an I-C there. And the other thing we know here is oxygen, right? So oxygen, we know this is part of an ionic compound. How do we know it's part of an ionic compound? Because we see that we have a metal in mercury and we have a non-metal in oxygen. So that means oxygen is behaving as an ion here. Our anion always has a single charge. If oxygen makes an ion, what ion does it make? Well, it always makes a minus two. So if oxygen's a minus two, we know that mercury has to cancel out. We know that mercury must be a plus two charge in order to cancel out the, the oxygen's minus two because all of these compounds are neutral overall, right? They don't have a net charge, they're all neutral. So that means we are dealing with mercury two, Roman numeral two. And then if you look up mercury two, you'll notice that that is mercuric. So there are two possible names for this, either mercury two oxide or mercuric oxide. We'd expect that you'd be able to write both of those. Check out number two. So again, what do we know with certainty? Well, we know the charge of sulfur. So sulfur, we know in an ionic compound, has a charge of minus two, right? Sulfide is minus two, but it's multiplied by three. So what is two times three? The total negative charge on the right-hand side of this ion is a negative six, right? Three negative two ions. That means the left-hand side must be a positive six, right? Because negative six and positive six would cancel out. We need a net neutral compound overall. But that positive six is split across two atoms. So that means each one of those two atoms must be a plus three. So that means we are dealing with, you could write it two different ways. We are dealing either with nickel three, Or you'll notice that nickel three is nickelic. And then we're bonded to sulfur as an ion, so the ending is sulfide. All right, let's jump down to number three, PT. So PT is platinum. Platinum is actually not on our list but we're gonna give it a Roman numeral anyway, um, and we're gonna figure out its charge in order to put it there. So we know that S is sulfur. We know that it becomes sulfide. We know that it has a minus two charge, but there are two of them. So overall, this must have a minus four charge. 
and that means PT must be plus 4. So when we write, go to write this, we are going to have platinum, Roman numeral 4, which is IV, and then what's left? Well, it's sulfide. Jumping down to number 4. Number 4 has nitrogen in it. Nitrogen is a minus 3 charge. We're bonded to gold. If we want a neutral compound, gold must be a plus 3 charge. Whenever we write those together, we will have gold, Roman numeral 3, nitride, but this has another name, right? It's auric nitride. And this would be gold 3 nitride. Finally, we have PB3N4. We know nitrogen's charge, right? It's a minus 3. There are 4 nitrogens, so ni negative 3 times 4 is negative 12. That means the lead here has to be a plus 12 charge overall, but that plus 12 is spread over 3 atoms, so each one of these leads is actually a plus 4. So we could either write this as lead 4 or plumbic. And then we'll finish off with the ending here, which is nitride. So this begs a question, and the question is, when do you need to do this, right? When do you need to write out those Roman numerals versus Latin names? When do we have atoms that require more than one charge? Um, when do we not? And if you stay tuned for the next video, we are, we are going to answer just that question. So if you have that question, jump into your next video, um, and we will discuss it there.